um, email integration, um, any event that the system can generate can be used as a trigger, if you will, to uh, send an email. Very often we will use alarm situations, um, door forced open, uh, door left open, uh, card access events, uh, access denied events can be used, uh, and we will be able to send an event, or I should say an email, to three individual email addresses. So the Atrium controller will be able to fire off an email on these type of events. Other events that can be used uh, for service uh, and maintenance contracts, for example, uh, AC power failure. Uh, there is a 12 volt, seven amp hour battery uh, connected to an Atrium uh, A22 and expander for that matter. If ever the panel loses AC power, um, provided you have a back UPS for your network and so on and so forth, and your uh, internet connection is still open, um, you will, the Atrium panel will be able to send an email indicating that the, uh, the panel has lost AC power. Uh, we also have the condition for low battery, um, so on and so forth. So you can use these events uh, to... Uh, to trigger an email, send an email, and you can send it to three different email addresses. You can have, uh, as a matter of fact, up to 100 different triggers per controller. So we saw a bit earlier, there were several controllers, each one had expanders in that uh, system architecture. So each of the controllers that's connected to a network can be uh, set to send an email, and each one of those can have up to one different event as a trigger to say, when something happens on my controller or my expanders, I will be able to send an email. If that is the case, we can have up to 100 different events sending those emails. Of course, uh, it's compatible with Gmail, Yahoo, uh, Windows Live, or of course, your, your local ISP uh, email account. So it's SMTP settings and your ports that you need to configure in the system, and you will use uh, that um, email configuration to have uh, Atrium send off uh, an email on different conditions. I'd like to uh, move forward as we see here. Um, the latest release of Atrium is, uh, as we can see, 4.2. It was released a couple of weeks ago, and I'd like to show you what the new features are. There is a, a lot of new capabilities in the system, and so let's see what's, uh, what's new in Atrium 4.2. Uh, we have uh, lockdown, emergency lockdown, so crisis management. Um, we are able to import and export the user or card database uh, through an Excel file, a CSV file, so on and so forth. Uh, the web server um, has been uh, modified and improved, and if you... Um, draw your attention to the uh, little screen captures that we see down here. Off to the left, we have expanders. So I mentioned um, moments ago on a couple occasions, the controller can have four door expanders. In previous editions uh, prior to 4.2, uh, in the web interface, we were not, uh, we were not able to see the expanders. Uh, that has been added in 4.2. So if your controller does have expanders in the 4.2 version, I will be able to go on the web and see that we do have expanders and, for example, be able to upload the firmware, our new version of firmware in those expanders. In addition to that, uh, in this little screen here, I think this is the, one of the key points. Um, what we're looking at here, uh, draw your attention to the little uh, green boxes here that we see. If you swipe a card at, the, at a reader, uh, and the card is not in the database. That will generate an access denied event. The card is not in the system, so it will not open the door, unlock the door. Uh, it will generate an access denied card unknown. And when that event is generated, we now have the capability with this new add button to add that card in the system database. So one of the ideas here is it's an older card that we've been using over over several years, and unfortunately, the number that was printed on the card is no longer available. We can't see it. Um, what we can do is swipe that card. It will be uh, a card unknown in the system, and we can add that card and assign it to an existing user or create a new user from the event database.
directly. So it simplifies the process of adding cards in the system. Another new way to do it. Uh, the uh, card import export uh, existing uh, legacy systems uh, maybe they want to replace an older uh, system that was able to uh, export a card database in the CSV file and you don't want to uh, have the uh, obligation to recreate this or define these cards in the new atrium system so uh, by exporting the, the uh, card database from uh, uh, one of our competition's uh, systems, or uh, maybe it's a human resources program that has a database uh, export capability, we will be able to import that information. So in the software, and this is done through the software, in the software when you log in, you have this option that it now appears offline programming. When you enable this option, it will allow you to import cards into the system database. Um, so when you gain access to the software after you put in your password and your login name, uh, this is the menu through the accounts. You will have the option to import and export your card database from, into the system. These are the different menus. So you have the card database that we can import and export, and also we can create um, holidays, schedules, access levels, access level groups, um, and here we see our import and export. Uh, the concept here of this offline system programming and this card import export, one of the advantages that this brings to uh, the installations, the installers, the integrators, is that I can be at my office and pre-program the system, import the card database, uh, and then create some schedules, create some holidays, access levels, and so on and so forth. And then when I go out to the site and I connect to the panel at the site itself, this brand new connection, I will be able to upload this information. That'll minimize my time at the site programming the system. So I can do it from the convenience and the comfort of my own home or my own office and take my computer, go to the site, connect to the control panel and at that point upload that information into the panel to minimize the amount of time programming on site. Um, the file formats that are uh, supported when we import as we see here there are CSV, Excel, XML and text files. We also include in the program files of your Windows computer in the program files 86 atrium you'll find a folder called atrium import templates so we'll have sample templates sample files there one of each format to show you what are the different um, mappings or what what is the structure that you need to use to be able to import into the Atrium system, the card number field, the uh, user's first name, user's last name, and their access level. What um, mapping do you need to create in the file so that Atrium will be able to import that file correctly? Once the import is done, Atrium will provide and pro present a, a um, report indicating uh, the success or um, failure of the import of the individual records in that file. So you do get a report that you can view on screen, print out, and save in a PDF if you'd like when you're done the import. After the import is completed, um, before I get to the lockdown, after the import is completed, since we're doing this in offline mode, when I reestablish connection to the control panel, it'll automatically pop up a window indicating that there are some data, there's some data on the computer that needs to be synchronized or uploaded into the control panel. So it will prompt you to upload that data, to synchronize the data with the system. So you log in in offline mode, you do your card import, you can do your access level, your schedules, and so on and so forth. You do your programming. When I go to the site with my computer, plug into the controller, establish connection, it'll automatically pop up a window saying there are there needs to be a, uh, an update of the database. There are cards and users in the system that are not in the control panel. Do you want to synchronize? Do you want to upload them into the control panel?
that's done automatically, prompting you to click yes or no.